Police officers who have arrested other police officers. What's the story? I actually have had to arrest three separate members of the justice system this year. First, a practicing lawyer and former judge, whom had been utilizing his position to coerce sex from defendants. He utilized this leverage even after he was not a judge anymore. Investigation by DCI revealed he had about a dozen victims, so a warrant for his arrest was made which I executed. Arresting a guy who used to put defendants in front of is a very odd feeling. He weaseled out of prison time, and got it all suspended and put on a direct supervision probation program. Absolute horse. I've seen guys do ALS get way more time, but it's not really a secret that money has a habit of tipping the scales of justice. Next was a prison guard, whom strangled his girlfriend, then stalked her relentlessly. I actually arrested him twice, because after he posted bail on the first one, he was spotted lurking outside her home only 45 minutes after being released. He's currently in on felony assault, strangulation of a household member, and felony violation of a protection order. He's still in my jail awaiting trial, with a bail that has been substantially increased. I'm anticipating prison time for him, but only time will tell. Third was a city police officer. I'm a county deputy sheriff, because we received a call from a six-year-old that his dad was in the garage doing drugs and wouldn't come out. Showed up to find four very young kids running around unsupervised. It was a city police officer smoking meth that he had confiscated during a traffic stop and not reported or turned into evidence. DCI took the case from us due to potential conflicts of interest, and have placed him in another county's jail, and I haven't heard any more about it. Hope he does time too. What kind of a-hole leaves his little kids totally alone and unsupervised while they smoke meth? Especially when said person is a cop. Unforgivable in my opinion. But yeah, 2020 has been a very strange year for me. This was during my time as a United States Marine Corps MP. Never arrested another police officer during my other gigs. Got a phone call from the guy's wife, saying he was drunk and refusing to leave the house. Knocked on the front door, but found him crying on the porch about his wife leaving him, because she wasn't happy anymore. She walked by the porch and motioned for me to come inside through the glass door. She proceeded to show me the red marks on her throat, the hole in the door that he punched through beside her head and some other evidence that doesn't need to be disclosed. After asking him to come inside and get dressed, he refused to leave with me. I wasn't going to handcuff him in front of his kid, but he decided to take that moment to run from me. He was faster, and got away for about 5 minutes, before I found him walking through a playground a couple buildings over. Caught up to him, he punched me, but was taken into custody after a slight use of force. On the way to the station he tried to kick out a window in my cruiser, and told me I was ruining his life. He ended up getting charged with about 7 different charges, and was kicked out of the marines. On his way out, he lied to NCIS and got an investigation opened on me for rape. Investigation was completed, thoroughly, and all charges against me were marked as unsubstantiated, but the charges still showed up after I got out and went through a background check for my security clearance. 10 out of 10, would do again. My slight inconvenience was totally worth it for him to go down for domestic assault charges. Ex-sheriff's deputy here. One night on shift I had the great misfortune to overhear on the radio that a small local chief of police, the whole department was only 3 people, was not answering a radio call. So my shift partner goes out to the call that they were trying to get him to go to, and I make my way to try and locate this chief of police. On my way to the police station thinking maybe he's just asleep on the couch, I see his squad car pulled off onto the side of the road, lights going. In that moment my heart sank. My first thought was, oh no this dude just got killed on a traffic stop. As I'm walking up to the car in a hurry, I notice that he's slumped over. I reached into the open driver's window and grab his shoulder, to try and put my fingers against his neck to feel if he has a pulse or if his skin is still warm and generally check to see if he is in fact still alive. As I'm doing this, I notice a distinct and strong odor of alcohol, as the chief of police wakes up, looks at me, puts the car in drive, and pulls away. About that time, another deputy pulls up behind my car, and I put out my radio that the chief is driving off. The other deputy, forgetting that we all use a shared frequency, then comes over the radio, and says, 
hey he should be easy to follow his lights are on. The lights go off. Fast forward to several hours later. Command staff is out at the police department. Seizing the weapons and evidence that's stored within the department. This chief of police shows up with the mayor of the small town. And submits himself to a brief Eliza. He barely passes. Fun fact. District attorneys do not like prosecuting chiefs of police. Especially when politics are starting to get involved. Unrelated to that, I was let go about two weeks later. For calling a suspect an a-hole. Unprofessional conduct. Former police officer and correctional officer here. I never actually arrested a fellow cop myself. However, my field training officer was arrested and fired from my former police department twice for drunk and disorderly. Before I worked there, he got his job back twice through union arbitration and, to his credit, gave up drinking. When I was working at the jail, we had a cop who was put into protective custody in suicide watch. After being arrested for stalking a woman he met on a call, he got obsessed with her and kept bothering her after the fact. And after she reported him, he made threats against her. A fellow correctional officer at my jail was arrested for producing and distributing child pornography. He got girls as young as 9 to send him nude photos, which he distributed on the dark web. He's doing 25 years in prison minimum. He won't be eligible for parole for another 15 years or so. We had 7 officers at the jail beat a disabled inmate, and then lie about it on their reports. The shift commander then tried to erase the video. All were fired and arrested, but were later acquitted of all charges. Sad thing was, they were all guilty as hell.